Hi, I'm Baron Ariane de Chateau-Michel from the beautiful Kingdom of Trimeris. And today my student, Lady Ekaterina Silesia, and I will be showing you how to create your own fitted French cotardie with the help of her husband, Jorgen Klaus, who will be operating the camera. Hi, Jorgen. Okay, so now we're looking at a few variations on the cotardie. She went too far there. Um, here you have an Italian one from 1380. You see the Virgin Mary in a very simple long sleeves. It looks like she's got some gold around there. This picture is unfortunately black and white, but it's French 1370. You can see the horizontal necklines on the ladies and the tippets hanging down. A bunch of men about the same time. <laughs> Doesn't help us with the ladies' clothing. No. Uh, peasants, at least a noble's idea of what a peasant dressed like. Um, 15th century um, middle class, if not peasants. A queen, uh, 1410. So we're starting to get into the changes that developed into the Poupeland, um, yes. But it still basically mm -hmm. is a cotardie at this point. It looks like her hanging sleeves mm -hmm. are fur-lined fur -lined, ones, yeah. but go all the way down to the ground. Looks like she's got some extra big bling around her neckline. Mm -hmm. Um, Italian, 1380, uh, you can see straight sleeves, three-quarter sleeves, or pushed back sleeves, mm -hmm. um, also the same. And that one is 1480, but she's weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you have Cotardie type undergowns worn under sideless surcoats, 1388. Those ladies have an incredible amount mm -hmm. of puddle in front. Almost makes it look like they're kneeling, except the dimensions are off. Mm -hmm. And that gets us into full on Hoopalon era. This, absolutely love the Trevish And this is my go to portrait for that yes. style. I've done this outfit. I want to do this outfit. Um, might do that one at some mm -hmm. point. And this is still a straight up cotardie with the tippets and everything. This is a cotardie hoopalond crossover hybrid. Yeah. And then this lady in orange and the mother in black are wearing full-on hoopalons. Mm -hmm. So the coat hardy stuck around for a for bit. For a while, yeah. Uh, well, of course, it was very, very elegant. Mm -hmm. That's a close-up of the bridal or engagement party. Mm. Coat hardy neckline, almost essentially a hoopalon. That's mm -hmm. one of those hybrids. Yeah. Uh, and everything else is hooping on. Those are those peasants that we looked at earlier. Mm -hmm. I kind of like the peasants better. <laughs> <laughs> and she's wearing yes. um, uh, definitely a cotardie. Yeah. With, it looks like her sleeves are pushed back. Mm -hmm. You can see bunching there. And she doesn't have tippets. No. But she's definitely got another gown underneath, underneath. and you yeah. can see the massive support she's got. Right. It's almost like a corset. Well, you'll see how we get yeah. that. And I think those are all the most useful portraits in here. Yeah. So we're going to look at some fabrics that we have on hand. And when I do the bride's gown, this is going to be the combination. Mm -hmm. The undergown, the sorkony, 
and the CoTRD who's the Wand Hybrid. But for most of the 14th and 15th century outfits, um, heraldic colors were very, very fashionable and were widely used, even though they weren't the only thing being used. Right. So you decided on red and blue, yes. and red is your undergown, and blue is your overgown. Okay. So, we're going to have fun laying this out. <laughs> Alright, first we're going to start with a page of math. And we're getting the numbers for the math. You need to find out your dimensions, because otherwise the process is going to be a little bit more complex. I prefer metric. I do have instructions for the English system if you want to be old-fashioned. Eventually I will have instructions for using L's and such, and I'll drop oh. the English altogether. Yay! <laughs> Alright. Um, when you're taking measurements, you want your measuring tape to be level. And don't squeeze, don't suck it in. Nope. Also, don't have a lot of excess because you'll just be cutting it away. For the first one, you need to write down 130. Yes, you can put your arms down. Okay. And write 130 right there. <laughs> okay, now this is probably the most important dimension in the whole thing because to have proper fitted French cotardie, you need to be able to support the bust. This is a garment that is worn without a bra. In fact, if you give it the proper flat mm -hmm. neckline, you can't wear you can't a regular no. bra. All right, 108. Waist. Bicep. Now you want to do this with your dominant arm because chances are that's the more muscular muscular one. one. Yes. And you want to make muscle. You are Superman, I you are Superman, <laughs> Superman, Wonder yeah. Woman, uh, whichever. And measure at the meatiest part while making a muscle. 38. Okay, now your next measurement is going to be the elbow, also if your dominant arm. And you want to make a muscle because you want to be able to bend your arm. Got it. True. Otherwise, you know those sleeves that cut off circulation? Sorry, yes. When you try them? <laughs> those are such you. a headache. Yes. 30. Forearm. Okay, you're also making a muscle because you want it to fit. You want everything to fit. 30. Amazing. <laughs> now your wrist, because you want this want to be to relatively form-fitting. 18. And now, if you're doing a goblet cuff, which mm -hmm. I think are just incredible, and they're great when it's cold, you want to have right. a flare over your hand. Done. So, exactly that relaxed position. You want to have enough room. 25. Okay. Okay, next, we're going to measure down from the base of your neck. And if anyone watching this has not done this type of thing before, mm -hmm. if you lean forward like Katrina is, not quite that far. far, okay, yeah, it's That's just your thought. head, it's not your body. Right. Yeah. One of your vertebrae will stand out yeah. from the others. And that's the point that you're measuring from. So from there, we can measure down. 
and the bust is at 27. Uh, write that one right there. And bra band, I measure to the bottom of the bra band, is 28. Clothes kind of catch right there, mm -hmm. so there's a really obvious line. Forty-one. And now we're measuring out to the point of your shoulder. Oh, Oops, sorry. <laughs> yeah. That happens. Arm down. Okay. If your arm is down and your posture is good. The point of your shoulder is where it goes from kind of horizontal to pretty much vertical. And you're looking at 25. Okay. So that one is that line right there. Now we're measuring over the point of the shoulder and down to where we measured for the bicep. Got it. And that is 40. Okay. And that's this one here? Yes. And then we measure to the back of the elbow. And you can even straighten your elbow okay. so that it stands out more. Got it. We're looking at 56. Now with your arm, you want it mostly straight, comfortably straight. Mm -hmm. Hold it right there and kind of rotate. And look for where the bone stands out on the wrist. Just past that is where we want to put a wrist measurement, which is 80. Okay. So, oops, we, this one right here. Okay. I skipped one. I skipped measuring to the forearm, okay. which is 61. And then to cuff, stop right there, and if I'm doing a cuff, I'm going to do it all the way. Right. So I measure to about where the pinky knuckle is, okay. and that is 86. Okay. Okay. Now turn and face me. Now, from this little divot in your neck, mm -hmm. we're going to measure down over your curves to the floor. 144. So that goes on number 18. And this worksheet is on my website, which will be linked to in the comments. Okay. And the cotelage, the French Cotardis de Cotelage was not extreme. I'll show mine later. The look was achieved not by taking the neckline down, but by raising the bust up. Mm -hmm. So, on my pattern, which I'll pull out when we get to that stage, there's literally only about that much distance between the back and the front. Okay. And everything <laughs> is just happens in that distance. <laughs> so, um, my general suggestion is three to five centimeters for your décotelage. Mm -hmm. Honestly, the bigger your bust is, the smaller I would suggest this number so that you have enough support. Got it. Okay. And um, so, you can pick your number, or we can discuss that later. We can discuss we're laying, it, yeah, we're laying it out. Let me see. Yeah. Okay. Now for sleeve type, I have some examples on the last page of my handout. Not many, I have more of them on my Pinterest page. But I've got April from the Trevish, mm -hmm. uh, that's a rather late Cotardi. Um, it was starting to be replaced by the Hoopaland and got it the mm, Hoopaland Cotardi crossbreed. <laughs> which I need to make one of those. Yes. This is another late one, but there are early ones on my Pinterest page. These are just 
but um, you can see two examples of the sleeve here. This one from the Thrairish Ur has a white band and then a white strip, strip of fabric. fabric. I saw it. Yeah. Presumably fabric, maybe fur, but this is Florida. I'm going with fabric. Yes. And Christine de Pisan, a little bit earlier, she has, I call it the self sleeve. Basically, the fabric from this sleeve continues long enough that if you could close it up, it would be a sleeve. But it looks flat and it's edged or probably trimmed with mm -hmm. fur. I need to make one of those for Gulf Wars. Yes. And her undergown sleeve sticks out from underneath that. And then you have the English version, which they just did long sleeves all the way. Okay. The Italians did a simple sleeve that looks like about three quarters, mm -hmm. although it also looks like it was pushed up some, so it might have been longer. Might have been longer and pushed up. And yeah. there are a couple Austrian pictures with the angel sleeve. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about Austrian fashions, I don't know enough about it to know whether that was a late evolution that had to do with the hoopalon, right. or whether that was the way the Austrians wanted to approach it. does sound very hoopalon. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, um, a transition. Yes. We will figure out what kind of sleeve the Katarina wants, and you'll figure out for yourself what kind do you want. And then the fun, more okay. cool choice thing, the length of your train. I have a cotardi with a train that is a full meter long. Oh my. And that is if it went straight down mm -hmm. and then hit the ground and turned straight out, the part that would be on the ground would be a full meter long. Full meter long. So when I'm wearing it, it looks like it's what, two meters long? Yes. <laughs> I have worn that in court and backed up without stepping on it by doing the Kavan stuff oh, okay. that I'm doing right now and right. you can't see. You can't, yeah, just kind of slide. So, yes. For an undergown, which every coat already had an undergown to it, whether you saw it or not, for the undergown I would suggest minimal train, just mm -hmm. enough to pull it out from under your feet. For the coat hardy, if you're doing full court, you need a train. You need a train. <laughs> I don't know if I want a full meter. <laughs> <laughs> Do a half meter, it'll look like a meter. That's not, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so Katharina will figure that out while she does her mathematics because mm -hmm. I make assignments. Okay, and math time. Pull up a chair, do your math. Yes, mom. So Katharina has been doing her math like a good student. <laughs> Thank you. And she has a question mm -hmm. on number 13. Yes. Because there are two parts to number 13. You're supposed to take the measurement from neck to bicep. She did that. Add 1.6 centimeters, basically one seam allowance. Right. And that's the first number that you start with. Then, if you're piecing the sleeve above the bicep, you subtract whatever your number is for number 12, which makes it a little bit more complex. But the reason for that is because we have options with our sleeves. Yes. Now, when I first started making cotardies, I looked at that. I looked at the pictures and went, E, the neckline comes out to here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to have little wispy bits of fabric trying to hold themselves together. Let's skip having a shoulder seam at all. Okay. Let's cut it in one piece. Okay. And that still makes a whole lot of sense with the cotardy because at least with the tippet type sleeve, mm -hmm. you have a very short sleeve, just comes to here. Okay. You know, your fabric's probably wide enough to incorporate that. And you're not going to have any little wispy fabric ends trying to hold themselves together. Okay. And wow, supporting, supporting. <laughs> right, it needs to support. <laughs> yes. Um, but, if you're doing the undergown, you're going to have sleeves out to here or yes. here. 
which means that's maybe not the best idea, especially since you probably want your buttons to come along this oh, line okay. instead of this line. That's true, because you can, yes, that would be very right. uncomfortable. Yeah. Yes. And it just looks better than this. So, uh, wait, we can drop the seam just a little bit so that, yes, my neckline comes out to here but my shoulder seam is here. Okay. And that little bit, well, I still have little threads from when I took the Cotardis okay. sleeves off of it. So there's a little, yeah. I see. Yes, there's just a seam right there. Right. And that allows you to rotate the sleeve seam mm -hmm. to about midway up the back. Okay. So you probably want to do that with your undergown okay. or with your overgown if you're doing English sleeves. Which I probably will. With a name like a Katarina? I know, but it sounds easier. Uh, six of one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Personally, I would look up what you would be wearing in Which is probably Alicia. more Austrian. Or completely different. Yeah. It would be fun to it would be. Yes. So personally I would recommend that you go through and mm -hmm. subtract I twenty-five subtract. from okay. all those numbers. Alright. So that you have that option later and don't have to get your calculator back out. And then we'll move on to number eighteen, which you had another question for. Yes. So we'll skip right to 18. I will do the okay. math for those later. So the okay. number 18, distance from neck to floor at front. Right. At hem Which allowance. That number. Right. Hem allowance is the 10 centimeters that I put in. Plus the 10 centimeters. And optional puddle. Yes. And then, and yes. In a lot of the artwork, you see the ladies standing around, and there is fabric in front of their feet, mm -hmm. like a short front mini train. And, you know, if you're graceful enough, you can deal with that, at least for your court gown. Mm -hmm. Use the pavon step to push the fabric out of your way and just amaze people. Okay. Or do what they do in some of the pictures and lift your skirt up elegantly. Elegantly. Take on that gothic sway and just look like you stepped out of it. But anyway, okay. the question is, how far how out far? there do you yes. want to be? So it says 20 to 80 centimeters. Right. I'm not sure 20 is basically the minimum for okay. a puddle. 80 is what a lot of those puddles look more like. Okay. Um, so I'm going to go halfway there. Just do 50. <laughs> <laughs> and I would also recommend that you not do a puddle on your undergown. Okay. Just, just on the, the overgown over okay. and just the one that you're wearing to court. Right. So, yeah. Put in the amount of puddle that you want. So now and I have to figure out what that okay. adds up to. It's 204. Okay. Okay. So now do we have any more questions before? For now? No. Okay. I think that looks good so far. So we'll cut this now and get back to it when we get okay. back to it. Thank you. All right, so we are back after Katarina finished her math assignment. And our next step is going to be plotting out your pattern, which means we're moving on to geometry class. Yay! <laughs> I hope you did well in geometry. Decent. This is pretty simple. Yeah. So what I'm doing right now is I'm lining the paper up. edge up with one of these mm -hmm. lines on my handy dandy cardboard. If you haven't got one, get one. Now, you can use any kind of paper for this. When I first 
made my first one, I actually used newspaper mm -hmm. that was already cut out and I taped it together. That's what I did. Yes. Because uh, it was the biggest uh -huh. thing I had ever done a pattern for. But it's a whole lot easier to use a roll mm -hmm. of newspaper, newspaper. Mm -hmm. or mm, Maybe Christmas craft. paper, mm -hmm. craft paper, butcher yeah. paper, whatever. Whatever you have access to. And now we are making a line. I made the tape and the pen. We are making a line um, five or six inches, or, yeah, five inches, 15. 13 to 15 centimeters, something like that, in from the one edge. And that is going to be, let's see, I'm going to use that line here, which is why I'm going to do it in inches, even though they're <laughs> outdated, but not outdated enough to be cool. Some Christmas papers you can get already you have the craft. Yes. yes, they do. I use them. It might be a relatively expensive way to get your pattern paper, but it works. Now, yeah. oh, there's my end. That's good. Okay, so mark it. This is going to be your baseline. All the way to the end? All the way to the end. We are actually going to go beyond what I've got unrolled right now, but not yet. Now, take your paper. Hey, mm -hmm. Because our mark down here is going to be your full frontal length. What is that number? <clears throat> From the floor front? This yes, one? 204. Two now, I'll shoot. <clears throat> How far up is without the puddle? No. Um, oh, oh, okay. Minus the 50. 140, well. 154. 154, maybe. Okay, except measuring it from here. Quick and easy way to get that without so worrying about being up danger. <laughs> your no puddle length and you have your court length puddle length. Right. <laughs> okay. And now measuring up from there, we need to find where our shoulder line is because like I said this is geometry. Mm -hmm. This is our x-axis. We need to find out where to put the zero for our y-axis. So completely all the way up to where it gets difficult, mm -hmm. takes us to 40 centimeters. And what number on the sheet is that? Question. It's 
not one. It's, it's not just one. Okay. that's how far up we could roll it. Got it. So okay. 40 centimeters beyond that point okay. is where we put, um, where we find zero, and that's where your y-axis goes. So we're going to gently roll that down here. The whole thing? Yeah. I'm going to roll this up a bit because we don't need it. Nope. Yep. Um, take the whole thing and we're going to unroll it as much as we can. Just like that. Okay. Okay. And we might as well do further. Okay. And straighten it up so the yeah. angles go away. Yeah. Okay. So now. And there's a trick when you're measuring to a certain point. Mm -hmm. Give a bit of distance. Okay. So you can, like I'm measuring five inches in. Okay. But five inches, if I put it like this, mm -hmm. would mean, okay, where exactly is that going? Right, but if you, if I move it over the one next inch, major, right, then you can just adjust. Then that Perfect. is no longer a problem. No. And now, that is a little too far out from the other mark. Yeah. So, we'll mark it here. One more mark. Midpoint. Yes. Now we can. Here, I'll give that back to you. There. Oops. Hold on. No, hold it. There. Now it should be lined up properly. needs to be something that we can follow. Just in case I missed some as I hit. To this one. Yes. To this one. Okay. And that should be far enough to get us to our Y axis. Right there. <laughs> yeah. And on the other side too. Other side too. Yeah. Now, it's already lined up with this graph mm -hmm. line here. Perfect. It's one of the very cool things about this graphing yes. cardboard. Even though they designed it for quilters. That's good. That's good. All right. You go from here all the way. Yes. Now, before you do a whole lot more, I like to put a, put a big fat F <laughs> front there. Okay. And a big B there. Perfect. Just in case it gets stressful. And, <laughs> okay, which am I working on right now? Right? Front or back? <laughs> yes. Now, the back is not a huge issue. Mm -hmm. Once you do the pattern down to about here, mm -hmm. it's just copy it from the front on the side, and okay, we're going off at an angle in the back. Got it. Okay. But we have a lot of graphing to do on this one. Okay. And we're going to need your measurements. Yes, we do. <clears throat> How far down did you decide that you want your decotelage? Oh, I was thinking mid between so those two. Four, yeah. not two, low. Okay, but not. <laughs> <laughs> not okay. It will look a lot lower than it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> And we're 
shoulders so I could go down two in the back. Now, shoulder point. Neck to point of shoulder, 25. Okay. Now one problem that a lot of people have when they're trying to put together a cotardy type gown, mm -hmm. or 16th century where it goes off the shoulder, is they take it out too far. Mm -hmm. And they have nothing supporting it, so it goes down. We don't want that. That is just so. Yeah. So far be it from me, but <laughs> <laughs> but if you take it just barely out mm -hmm. there, right, and you make sure that this bone right here from the shoulder is covered, right. This this will support it on. Yes. Okay. You can wear it all day, even if you're like. Like me. <laughs> <laughs> and it will stay up. And okay. we'll go, oh my goodness. How did you do, do that? that? Ta-da. And that is This the is magic. how. Okay. Yes. So, 25. Means that we're making a mark now. right there. Now, I will have to check. It, this is the cover of this area. Mm -hmm. That's your magic. Okay. Now, I forget whether I put it in there or not, mm -hmm. but you want to make sure that you have a seam allowance there because you're going to be hemming it in one way or another. Actually, I don't think there is. Ooh. It says neck to point of shoulder. Okay. Yeah. So put in minus 1.3. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I will need to fix that. Yeah. Okay. So this line here mm -hmm. is where you actually want to cut on your shoulder. Okay. And then there's the seam lines. So that it just barely comes out to the 25. Got it. And you know how the human body is built so that the neck mm -hmm. goes forward? Yeah. It's placed forward of the shoulder line and it goes forward. Okay. So because of that, that's why we just went down two centimeters in the back and we're going down four in the front. Four in the front, okay. This. So it's actually. So we have to. Our widest point mm -hmm. is going to be one centimeter forward of this. Okay. So we'll be right about there. And that's where. Yeah. yeah. So. Let's mm -hmm. see. Very very skinny. Do you want to use this one instead? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just gauging the distance by eye. Mm -hmm. But follow the line here. Yeah. That looks good. Yep. And so we're making a U. A U. Parabola. <laughs> if you know your geometry right. terms. This. I actually want to make my parabola a little bit wider, wider. there right. so that it looks right. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot of looks right in Looks right in this. <laughs> Which means that it's an art and not a science. Right. But it's based on the science. It's based on the science, roughly. Yes. Yeah, that's good to hear that looks. Yeah. We'll pretty that up when we cut it. Mm -hmm. And then we need to mark everything else. Okay. Now, pretty much all of the graphing work is going to be in this quadrant. Got it. Where we have positive numbers on both the mm -hmm. X and Y axis. So. 
Give me which number? First, we need the distances down. So 9 through 16. Okay. So 29.5 for neck to bust. Okay. From front clip. Okay. okay. And. Oh, no. No, no. That was. No. Okay. We didn't measure from the front, which is something that you kind of need to do when you're measuring yourself. Okay. Um, so we just need that number over here. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, the 27. Yes. Okay. And that explains why I suddenly had... Okay. Because I was plus, plus 2.5 measure yes. from class. And a 28 and the 28 is And then waist is at 41. 41. So 40 was almost an important number. Yeah. And then that was the end going down because at this point you just want fullness, as much fullness as you can afford. Right. So that's just from there. So, and I'm actually going to put on that okay, side so, so I can get the measurements more easily. So, what's the next one? Neck to point of shoulder. We got that. Okay, then there's neck to bicep. Okay. And let's see. Did you want the minus number 12 or before that? Well, it's up to you. Mm -hmm. Do you want a shoulder seam or not? Personally, I would recommend that your pattern have the shoulder seam because it's really easy to okay. just continue things. And that works. That's fine. Okay. So we don't actually need to take it out. So, um, so our next one is going to be to the seam, basically. Okay. Which, remember what I said about not wearing little wispy ends of fabric right, holding of fabric. things down? Right. Yes. So you're actually going to want to make sure that you have a minimum of two, three centimeters. Okay. Between one side and the other. Now, that's two. So point of shoulder 25, and you have three more? Okay. And um, basically think about it this way. Your seam for attaching the sleeve mm -hmm. is going to be yeah. um, 1.3 centimeters. Okay. And your seam for finishing on your the coat, coat. Your, your, your opening open mm -hmm. to the neck, is going to be about the same amount. Mm -hmm. So you need a little bit of fabric in between, in between there, right. so you don't have the two seams right up against each no, other. No, you don't want that. So. so this looks good. That looks good. Okay. And you want to mark some place that you put that at 28. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sleep. Right. Or seam. Okay. That's the seam. That's the raw edge of the seam. Mm -hmm. So your actual measurement is to it's here. Right there. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Another thing I need to adjust with mm -hmm. is Okay. So minus twelve and minus um whatever the distance is that you choose. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to set the distance at one centimeter. That sounds good. And I will change that on the handout. <laughs> <laughs> so you're subtracting whatever your number is for number 12. Okay. And an additional one centimeter. Okay. 
So that way your sleeves are the right length. Yay. Oh, I know why I didn't when I was setting up. It's not a problem to have just a little bit of extra length in your sleeve. Right. And it's actually kind of a good thing because otherwise you might have a little too little. Yeah. Play. You don't want too little so you have too much. Yeah. Yeah. So that one centimeter is okay. basically built in ease. And I'm glad I remembered that. Yes. Before we wonder what was wrong. Why are my sleeves not quite yeah. as comfortable? Yes. <laughs> okay, so Good. that makes sense. Glad okay. we went through that. Okay, and that's everything that we're doing now on mm -hmm. that. Now, we are taking our marks from the x-axis okay. up onto the y-axis. So for the bust, I'm going to have you mark these. Okay. So I guess I'll read them. I'll read them. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to line things up so that that is, yes. Okay, so for the bust, Looks like 32.5. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this is your line. This is this your the measurement I was going to say. Yes. Okay. You just run a nice and solid 32.5. Yes. Right there. Yes. Oop. And you just need a dot. You don't need okay. a line. That's what I did. Okay. Yes. This was to make sure that, you yeah. know, it didn't get wonky. Right. When I'm doing this okay. in a class, mm -hmm. I tell people grounding is your friend. Yes, it is. Round to whole or half numbers. <laughs> Anything smaller than that is more detailed than you're really going to care about. Right. Round up. <laughs> if in doubt, round up. Exactly. Definitely round to the nearest whole or whole half, half number. number. Okay. So this one we're not going to be using. This is the one we're using. Yeah, so put an X over that. And this one? No. This no. is your underbust. That this is, is your oh, bust. Okay. Yep. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to next one the ways. <laughs> okay. The waist. Messed it up. Thirty-two points. Round it. Yeah. And if you're doing this like the artwork, mm -hmm. they have a whole lot of fullness starting not even at the waist or the hips okay. and starting up here. Up here. Wow, foot. really? Think about it. Yeah. These women spent half their adult lives pregnant. pregnant. <laughs> So, I'm sorry, if I'm making a gown, I'm going to look good in it. Right. And I'm not going to have to put on some moo moo. Right. The half of my life that mm -hmm. I'm pregnant. Right. So, the fullness starts right about here, which okay. is right about where you need it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And then, you know, you can put on a belt, although they were less common on women than right. reenactors tend to prefer. But the the things. <laughs> yes. The fullness is very elegant, mm -hmm. and you can always lift your skirts and have them drape prettily. Yes. <laughs> Show off the red of your undergown. Yes. So at this point, we are set with those. Okay. I'm standing on. Yes. <laughs> those out of the way. And one of these. Uh, the bicep circumference. That one we do need just to make sure that your arm size is big enough. Mm -hmm. Because the bicep circumference is a good gauge for how big your arm size needs to be. Okay. Without adding another measurement that you need to take. Right. For that. Yeah. If you were doing something fitted, you would need the precise number. Mm -hmm. Okay, 21.5. So, 
mark it at 23. So I'll that here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, with smaller busted women, mm -hmm. the arm side is further out than the bust. Okay. With larger busted <laughs> women, <laughs> you need a certain bit of magic that I do. Okay. Because we're going to cut it to have most of that. Mm -hmm. But we're going to be taking away a lot of that. Okay. And the reason is because we're going to put a lot of it right here. Oh, okay. So, don't mind getting too personal. What cup size are you? Well, it depends on the bra, but normally you're at a triple D. <laughs> okay, <laughs> not the biggest one I've ever done. <laughs> I don't recall how much we gave her, but we'll take you out to here. Okay. <laughs> and uh, don't need to sketch that in. And I have a nice little straight edge. Okay. Okay. So a lot of this is going mm -hmm. to go away, but. We're going to put it there to begin with. Okay. And with a smaller busted woman, woman mm -hmm. I would like for mine and then about there. Okay. And the under bust. Right. I curve it like that. Oh, okay. For yours, well, we're going to be taking a lot of this away, but for now, it's we'll all going to be there. Right. Can always take away. Yes, it's very hard to put something back when yes. it's already been cut off. Okay, so that is going to be our card for that. And I'm not ready to mark that yet. So, you can do all sorts of complex arm size, mm -hmm. but in all honesty, Simpler is better. So, now, how full do you like your skirts? <clears throat> I like it full. Okay, not. We're not a princess. Not princess. Well, but the cut elegant doesn't exactly have a support structure holding it out. Got it. Otherwise, it would look like a lot of your traditional wedding gowns. Right, right. Um, Something maneuverable. <laughs> okay. Well, it hangs down, and fullness is good. It allows for you to have those pretty pictures with yes. your skirt up. Right. Now, what I tend to do on my patterns mm -hmm. is I mark two different lines. Okay. One of them, well outside of the waist and possibly the hip measurement if I'm worried mm -hmm. about where her hips are. And that's for the undergown. Okay. The coat or the sorcery, depending on which term you use. The kirtle, if you insist on being English. And that's the line for that. Okay. And then... Ah, okay. That's the line. Very okay. full court coat already. Got it. Much fuller. <laughs> yes. The question is, how much fabric can I carry around? Yes, yes. to look graceful. <laughs> to look great. <laughs> so, we will mark our sorquiny line, and then we'll mark our coat hardy line. Okay. Much fuller. Yeah. Now, is it up higher then? Is it not much. Not much, just a yeah. maybe about half a centimeter. Okay. Okay. Like that. Yeah. Okay. And then once I finesse this curve, it's going to look like it came in at the same place. Okay. Okay. 
Now, unless you have access to beautiful fabric that is wide enough for the full skirt, you're going to be adding cores, which are yes. more accurately called godets. G -O -D -E -T. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, a gore has four sides, a godet has three. Okay. We tend more to use godets. Yes. Got it. Yeah. That's what I tend to use more too. Yes. Yeah. Now, you're going to find it really simple to add your godets over okay. here and in the back and such. And it will be simple enough to add one in the front. Mm -hmm. But it would be a very narrow pair of godets, and you'd have two extra seams there, right where people are looking. I don't want that. No, which is one of the reasons mm -hmm. why we moved that in some. I need to see how long. You want right to the edge. Maximize your use of fabric. Mm -hmm. yes. Let's put it on this side. That side, yes, so I that, agree. Yes. Okay. okay, thank you. Yeah. All right. Fabric use is maximized yeah. without needing to put a good day anywhere. Woohoo! Very good. Now we slide it back down. Mm -hmm. Because we need to mark the back. Like that, thank mm -hmm. you. Okay. Now, don't need to do much on the back. Right. Basically, just where your lacing is. Now, mm -hmm. what was the distance down for the mm -hmm. bust? Distance is down like yeah, that. Yeah, I okay. Neck to point of shoulder, neck to bicep, neck to elbow, neck to fore, neck to wrist, neck to cuff. Which one would no. be? Up here. Okay, so neck to, to bra. Bed. Okay. 28. And neck to bust. That's the Okay, one that's only 27. Yes. So, right about in here. Mm -hmm. We need to have room for your shoulder blades. Oh yeah, those things. <laughs> Unless you want to have to stand with your arms like this. Yes. I can't move. Oof. Yes. I don't want to rip anything. Right? <laughs> okay. So, which, and it's not a whole lot of space. Basically. Okay. I see. Just like that. Okay. And then... So you don't feel like it bothers. Yes. Yes. Just enough to give it a little bit of range of motion. Now the distance down to the waist was... 41. 41. Okay. So, we want the lacing to continue a bit past the waist. Yes, that's what I was thinking. Yes. In fact... This is going to come like so. It doesn't need to be an extreme angle, even on the cut hard right? Okay. This little bit here is so that you can sew your facing, your facing or your lining it. In to the outer layer. Got it. And then still be able to sew. You're seeing. You're just closing that up. So you don't feel like it's going around. <laughs> and the doctor's outfit. There. That's good. Now, the rest of the back. Mm -hmm. 
will either be copied off the side. Right. Or, yes, I'm cheating and using something flexible because <laughs> it's easier. It's easier. Yeah. And let's see. I like to approach where I know I'm going to be piecing something and mark uh -huh. where it will end. Yes. Okay. Because this is so much easier to do, you know, deal with adding your godet bits mm -hmm. to it. Okay. Rather than trying to line up points. With the point. Got it. And much easier to line it up properly. Never thought of that. Yeah. I always end up matching points. <laughs> yeah, so then it doesn't work. Doesn't work. <laughs> In any pattern, your weak spots are where you are going to have tears. Okay, and this is definitely a weak spot. Okay. So there are a couple things that you can do to eliminate that problem. First, I build a bridge. Oh, okay. This little strip of paper is not going to be cut out when we cut out the neckline. Okay. Hmm. And because it's a narrow strip that's been reinforced, right. it's not going to tear, but I'll be able to easily see mm -hmm. where I need to cut on the fabric Got it. to make it work. And the other possible places where you're going to have tearing. Yeah, I see that. Personally, it's right at the I tend to okay. go completely around Shoulder the there. neckline when I'm doing this one. I believe that, yeah. Even a little bit over just to make sure that I get every last bit mm -hmm. of that done. This way. Okay. And I 
think you're better lined up for cutting the lines. That's okay. Alright, so this is our arm side, and this is the side seam. Right here is where we currently have the back, or where we currently have the coat hardy starting to spread out. And at the same place, we will start the sorquini at a less extreme angle. So that you've got fullness, but not so much. Let's see. Over here, we have how that whole bust curve goes. And this is the neckline. And this is taped all the way around to reinforce, to reinforce it. it. And if you help me, we can yeah, um, open this up a little bit. Okay, and this will show the front and back. This is that part of the shoulder that you really want to have covered so that your gown stays up. And this is where it flares out for the shoulder. That's the shoulder blade area. This is about the floating ribs. This is the waist. This is where it starts to flare out for the back and the train. You can just measure from here okay. down to your back hem. You did mark how long you wanted your full train to be. Right? Mm -hmm. You did, didn't you? <laughs> well, it was one of those things that you were going to decide on, so I don't know how long you decided okay. you wanted your full train. I think we, I think I wrote, did I write it down here? Half a meter? Yeah. Optional puddle. So that's where the two of four train. Oh, that's so not that. It's added. Okay. Right. The puddle was the, the front. The was the front. front. Right. The train is the back. So. So. so look at number eight. And now I'm thinking. I'm reading. Yeah. So it's like three to five. Um, a meter. You said. One of mine is. Yes. It's <laughs> very medieval. <laughs> Walking through puddles. Well, <laughs> I can lift my skirts. Yes, we can. Yes. Okay. In fact, holding your skirts bunched up like this mm -hmm. is very, very medieval. You see it in lots of portraits. Right. In fact, there seems to have been a stylized way of doing it just so. Just so. so. Yes. Very pretty. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going there just yet. I think I do half a meter. Half a meter? Half a meter. Okay. Okay. So. So that be. Well, you what have you half a meter for a puddle. Okay. Oh, so, so maybe I should go with a full meter. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> At least on the version of the gown that you have the half meter puddle okay. on, which is not your under gown. Right. So, I would take this number, okay, your finished number, and add your train length to that. 
So 2 over 4 plus half a metre. Um, and that's that was the next one down here. This okay. one right here. Let's see. Half a metre from there. Sure, this is the one that's got half a metre of puddle. <laughs> You don't ever have to do that full on extreme <laughs> versions. That's one thing I like about this pattern. Right. Because, oh, I don't want a half meter puddle on my gold force gown. Mm -hmm. Let me fold that up, make a crease, and I'm going off this other one. Okay. So this isn't in centimeters. So that right. Okay. <laughs> We did it. <laughs> yes. Now you know how long you want your cord Wow. It's, it's six yards and that's without talking about the good day. Right? Okay. <laughs> so now we measure down from this fold line right here. Maybe I should go 30. <laughs> You can always take always off. Always take off. That's but true. You can't add. That's true. So might as well do it that way now. Okay. So flip it around. Yes. So measuring down, I'll hold this. You got that? You um, mark how far down we <laughs> Oh, we're nowhere near. <laughs> oh, I know. So hold on. Okay. And a good idea. Oh, okay. Before you go on rolling it and having your measurement, right. yes, so take like one of the lines like 150 and mark it. There we go. Okay. Uh, that's not. The, mm -hmm. It's the long line that goes. Oh all yes, I see that. Yes. yes, I know that. Yes, in case that ever matters. Okay. Okay. And put an X over the other one. Because when you're playing around with fabric at yes. <coughs> o'clock in the morning, yep. well, you don't want to have to, to figure out which no. spot you really meant. Okay. Alright. Right, now we can slide it up. And that should, that should be, be good. Enough. Yeah. If it isn't, it'll be close. So yeah, take it. There. Yeah. Mm. No. In this one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, measure down the other one fifty four. Or no. You went it would be one hundred it would be okay. Your total number was two fifty four. That's so it's so one oh four. One oh four, okay. It's a little bit more. Okay. I'm going to just a little bit.
And that looks like an awful lot of fabric right here, but mm -hmm. most of it is going to go away. Yes. We just don't know exactly how much yet, so we can't, <laughs> right? can't cut it on that line. No. Right to there. Um, you want me to cut straight further? out? Or further? How far do you want me to go? Far enough that you can just cut straight on here. Okay. All of this is going to be now make sure when you get to that bridge right that you come S straight up to it stop go across. across yes okay and then we'll put this out later All the way to this one? All the way to that other line, yes. Okay. Can I cut this off? Yes. Okay. And either now or later on, we can cut out this right. island cut here. Out. So I'll continue here. Yes. And you know which line to follow. Yes. Not the end more. It is, okay. I was going to, but I said maybe just in case, let me just. Not a big difference. No, but, but hey, okay, you might as well. I find it rather remarkable. That approximately two hundred years after mm -hmm. you first truly fitted garment in Western Europe, or really anywhere, you have the epitome of the perfect fitted garment. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that was what fascinated me at first about the Blio. Yeah. Not just the way it looks, although it looks beautiful, but the fact that it was the first fitted the garment, garment, period. Yeah. Before that, if you wanted it tight, you belted it tight. Right, right. Okay, so I'm going to cut out the... Cut out the island. And I find it useful. So I was just going to do that. Oh. I try to use this. Oh, okay. Because that way if I'm off, okay. I'm not in an area that it's going to matter. So I'm, this is going to get all just yes. cut all the way here. This is the shoulder okay. line. Right. Which so is my absolutely arm. not important. Hold it right here. Thank you. And you can just cut from here then. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what I like to do. Mm -hmm. Instead of fighting to get up to the corner, yeah. so I round it and then I go back. Oh, okay. And remember, we reinforce the whole yes. neckline area with tape, so the pattern is mm -hmm. not going to want to rip there. Good. That makes total sense because I would be ripping it ridiculously <laughs> right now. <laughs> yes! It does not work out well if no, you're yeah. not careful. Um, we've got one, the outer one. Yes. Yeah. 